What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? I figured I'd do a Friday night live for you guys. I haven't been live for a long time, so I figured I'd do this one and do a real talk type of show. One thing I have learned, a lot of people on the internet, they don't know how to do real talk. And, you know, after the last couple days of an experience, and I talked about this this morning on the Hollywood and China Dow show. Things ain't real like I remember it being real. Especially in this the club scene. I'm like, holy cow, how PC can this thing get? It is out of control, I guess. But people are different now. Uh, they believe in different things. I guess you can call it uh, now freaking evolving, if you will. I don't know, man. But it is kind of a kick in the nuts. How you guys doing in the chat room? Everybody, uh, J-Man, Little Mama, the who? Make sure to go over and subscribe to Little Mama's Kodak Moments and J-Man's uh, channel. If you guys got any other channels out there, go ahead and put it in there. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, and that was the blood oath. It means different things to different people. And I was just doing a scan of the internet because I had this asked to me. Well, how hard is it to get out of an MC or how hard to, is it that to get in an MC? And it's like, stop paying attention to the media. Stop paying attention to these shows. It's not like that at all. There is no blood oath. Now, you might spill blood, sweat, and tears with uh, an MC, but you sure the hell ain't taking a blood oath to get in and get out. Now, if you're talking about that kind of stuff, you're talking about uh, in the prison system, yeah, there's a lot of organizations that you got to, you know, get your way in through blood, if you will. Uh, I'm not going to say too much on YouTube because the way they are. There's many white prison gangs that do that and a lot of Hispanic and a lot of black gangs that do that type of stuff. Then you got the outfit, La Costa Nostra, whatever you want to say. But I do not know of any, and maybe you guys might, where somebody has to take a blood oath to get in the MC. It's not like that at all, man. Usually what you got to do is you got to hang around you got a prospect, and then your membership and stuff like that. And yeah, you might bleed with fellow guys, but you sure the hell ain't killing to get in, and you're not killing to get out. You know, most of the time, it's either you're out good or you're out bad. Uh, you know, unfortunately, nowadays, if you piss in the wind wrong, you're thrown out bad, which it kind of puts... Uh, a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths when they are kicked out bad for politics. That's the biggest one is the politics. You don't get along with somebody. They don't like you for some reason. And next thing you know, it is you're out on bad. Go screw your way out. You know, screw yourself on the way out. But one thing I have noticed is how hard it is to get people involved in the scene and it always amazes me how people will throw each other under the bus in a heartbeat just to get that political gang i never uh understood that and i guess i never will uh i'm still dumbfounded with uh you know what it came to the point where i realized after meeting some other clubs just how much things have changed. You know, a lot of people have been saying, hey, man, it's not like it used to be. It's totally different. Your attitude, your way of thinking is an old man's type of attitude. And I got to agree, man, after I seen some stuff that I did, and I was like, you know what? These guys got something going on, man. You know, this is true stuff. You know, things, how can I say it? 
really ain't as hardcore as it once was. This goes with traditions that MCs uh, did, the symbols that MCs wore. It's not politically correct anymore. And the one thing I never thought would happen would be for an MC to go politically correct. Now, we should have seen it. Yeah, we should have seen it. And this brings me to the thing. You think with all these new type of clubs happening out there, with all the technology, all this stuff that the media tries to claim that motorcycle clubs are about, you really think they're going to take a chance at a blood oath to get into the club. That's something you see in movies. If you're not a part of the street scene or never have, you'll never understand what that truly is. Now, again, like I stated earlier, when you get involved in the club or even any organization, you might spill blood with somebody, but it's not a requirement to get in. You guys get where I'm coming from? Let's see what we got here. Oh, Ironhead. Clubs and people who join these clubs are what's in it for me. Generation Brotherhood is forgotten. You know what? You make a hell of a point. Let me put that back up. You make a hell of a point there, Ironhead, that it is what's in it for me. They're following a lot of these clubs is we want to scoot all the way to the top. You just might have just got your patch and already you're angling to try to be a president, which I don't know why you would want to do or an officer, it's all. It's almost as much about notoriety than it is actually riding with an MC. I talked about this uh, in another segment about the best thing that everybody enjoys, rather you're on this side of the fence, that side of the fence, is the core of the motorcycle. The motorcycle is what brings us all together in this lifestyle. Yeah, then we start branching out in the different supporters of different clubs. Yeah, we get that. But that is on law. It is lost on people, Ironhead, and you got that damn right. Uh, very good uh, statement right there. But do you guys know where I'm going with this is, hey, wait a second. The media is totally off base. The blood oath is something. You know, I always said it this way. They go after MCs because they claim it's organized crime. Well, I can tell you it's not the most organized setup if you were ever on the inside or close to it. It's actually mayhem inside of a motorcycle club. Things are not organized like you think. You know, that's evident in all the stuff that comes out when a few guys go out and do some stuff and get busted for it. Well, if it was an organization like you try to put it to the general public through the media I'm talking about, you think they know what's going on and have their hands out for a little payment. Where's your cut? You know what I'm talking about? If you guys are out there, and if this is an organized criminal deal, where's my cut? It's that simple. So how the hell are you going to go talk about a blood oath with an MC? I don't get it. But there's so many people that are ignorant, that don't know how to do their own research on any particular subject, they'll believe what's fed to them. You know, I guarantee there's people out there that say, okay, I'm going to watch the news, and if they what they tell me is always true. Okay, what happens when they tell you to go walk off a bridge and you break your bones, which is going to suck? You're going to say, well, what, why would they tell me that? Well, the better question would be, why the hell would you believe them? So it just takes stepping back off the internet. It takes stepping back into reality to know 
that this blood oath crap to join a motorcycle club is totally BS. It, it, it's way off base, man. Uh, Florence agreed, or for notoriety and street cred, brotherhood these days is secondary. Well, you know what, Florence, you nailed that right. Now, when you're talking about street cred, I'd have to come back and ask you, well, what kind? What are you talking about street cred? Now, and I hate to say this. I really do. I hate to say it. And there's going to be a lot of people that come back and say, what are you talking about? MCs are really not at the top of the ladder when it comes to streets. You have most of your gangbangers and criminal, uh, actual organized crime at the top of that ladder. So when you're talking about street cred, I don't know how, how much you really can get in an MC. Unless, again, you're actually going away from what the club is doing. And I truly believe that. I truly believe, and you might call me ignorant, that it's only a few people within the clubs that do something like you're seeing in the newspaper. Everybody else in that club is going to work. They're raising their families. They're putting food on the table. You can't tell me that that's organized crime. There's a lot of people within the clubs that can't pay their dues. And that might be 50 to 100 bucks a month. They can't pay it. But you're going to sit here and try to tell me that you heard this club, you have to take a blood off to get in. Get out of here with that nonsense, man. What happened to people questioning things? What happened to people doing their research on things? I, it, it just as amazes me nowadays that it's like that. And then you can go and see these little comments uh, that people post on YouTube or Facebook and anything like that. It is like, dude, dude, you're whacked. You're way the hell out there, man. Uh, thanks for becoming a new member, uh, no Brad, uh, Nomad Brad. That is very appreciated. Make sure you get a hold of China Dow. And she'll get you hooked up in the members only deal on Discord. Get your name, the whole nine yards. Let's go to another one here. Nicholas, some are members, some are family. When duty supersedes all, hate always shows, especially at entry. Uh, rock on, man. That's a good uh, saying right there. What do you guys think, though, of people that actually think that you got to take a blood oath to get into? A motorcycle club. Again, in the prison system, I'm not going to freaking lie to you, man. Hell, I'm pissed off right now because my kid who's doing time joined something up. I'm not going to go in personal on that, but joined something up. It's not a freaking light organization. But I think we both know that, hey, man, you're never getting out of there. You got to do what you got to do in there. There's no way of changing. It is what it is. You're from the streets. But going back to the street cred type of deal that Flossie brought up, there's all different kinds. And most of the time, you're not going to find that with an MC. If you want street cred, man, you're looking at the local street gangs. Here in Chicago... You got to put in some work to get that street cred. It ain't no talking out in the city of Chicago. That's just like, uh, you ever heard of people go up and say, well, you know, they get in this argument or something. Well, yeah, I'm going to shoot that guy. Well, you might be just running off at the mouth, but if you run into somebody who actually takes that kind of shit serious, you're in trouble, man. They might turn around and pull a gun out on you. And that happens in Chicago all the damn time. 
you know, that's where a lot of street cred comes in, the money that you're making. And again, uh, a lot of MC members actually are paying to be a part of the thing. They don't get no money out of that. They're paying in. It's like having a second job, but you're paying the employer. A lot of people don't realize that, and especially when you get these networks out there saying, hey, these are guys are a bunch of gang members. What the hell do you know about a bunch of gang members, man? What do you know what you're reporting that, hey, they were pushing a couple ounces of meth? You think that's an organized crime organization? Now come back and tell me that when you catch them with about three, four hundred keys. Then we're talking some movement. But we're not talking ounces. And most of the time, even your members are, when something like that goes down, they're going to say, what the hell was going on? We didn't even know about this. But here, they're bringing the heat on them. I would have to venture to say, what kind of brotherhood is that? If you're bringing the heat on your so-called brothers, what kind of brother are you? And you didn't have any sense because you're probably using the club's name in your business dealings. And next thing you know, somebody's getting fucking recoed. That's why a lot of clubs and the media, the cops will not report this, is a lot of clubs, they will kick you to the curve if you're doing anything illegal. Anything illegal. I got to say uh, hi to Harm, man. Team Harm, man. You know, we're all on your team, uh, Harm. Hopefully you're doing better going through that treatment and stuff like that. We all thinking about you. What idiotic things have you heard? Or idiotic things that you guys actually seen in comment sections? Now, I know... A lot of the hate stuff about clubs comes from cops or cop supporters. And that's one thing I talked about this morning was, yeah, that line I always talk about, guys and gals, it's no longer there. I have seen that. It's no longer there. It used to be cops one side, bikers on another. The line, don't cross them into the other's business. But God dang, man, it ain't like that anymore. You'd just tell by the attitudes. And I think that is a sad state because Generation Z hasn't even got to enjoy what the pure lifestyle was all about. No, they're coming into a watered-down, ridiculous lifestyle. And yeah, I might have a little attitude on this subject, but that's because the nonsense that you see, people not being able to think for themselves, people thinking that you have to take a blood oath to get in the damn motorcycle club. And if you have anybody out there telling you that you got to take some kind of blood oath, tell them to go get you know what. Tell them to go freaking spin on their freaking middle finger or something because they're a bunch of full of crap people. You don't have to go out there and spill blood, meaning pop somebody with the 22 behind the ear to get in an MC. And you sure to hell, if you want to leave said club, have to worry about them killing you. It's not once you're in, you're in. It ain't like that. This ain't the prison system. It's not one of them organizations. No, once you're out, you're out. Because again, you've been paying them. They haven't been paying you. So if you're going to be involved in something where they say, hey, you got to take a blood oath, I'm going to come back and say, okay, how much we making? You know, well, how much of this money am I getting if I got to take an oath like that? I better be making some cake, man. I better be making some money. Because the sure to hell ain't going to be me paying you to do some of uh, this kind of stuff. So I basically believe it's ignorance, man. It's ignorance on a lot of people's part 
Uh, what do we got here? Uh, thanks a lot for that harm. Uh, smash that thumbs up. It helps out the channel. That it does. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Cedo the Great. I like that, man. Cedo the Great. Hence why I'm so low. You know what? That's uh, what a lot of people are doing now. Because they can't take the politics of it anymore. A lot of things where you got people talking about protocol. Well, the problem is they're talking about pro their protocol. Yeah. But then there's tradition. They get it messed up so bad it's laughable. You're talking about protocol when it's actually a tradition. So now you get these meatheads out there that are running around. Well, this guy said this, that guy said this, and then you do go on out on the streets and you get your ass popped, handed to you. So I can see where people are, are tired of it. They don't want to deal with it. It's, you know... Being an MC is like, uh, it's regimentated. It really is. And it's like that for a reason. A lot of people can't take that regimentation anymore. You know, that's where you get people that say, well, I can do what I want. Thanks for that donation, Cito. That means a lot. Uh... He belongs to the CMA two years now. Rock and roll, man. That's awesome. Uh, CMA is a kick-butt uh, organization, man. Always talking about the man upstairs. I love that stuff. Uh, I really do. And it's just like, let's put it out there. Yesterday's video. Guy kept on bugging the hell out of me and wanted my thoughts on a club that started out with law enforcement in it, meaning cops, correctional officers, MPs, started off that way and was like that for over a decade. I say, okay, what's up then? Well, do you think that they could turn into a 1% club? It don't matter what I think. It really doesn't because it has nothing to do with me. That's the problem. Everybody wants to get in everybody else's business. But standing back, I can say, well, you know what? Everybody bones on iron order because they used to sell patches. This is what. A couple of these other clubs did. They followed Iron Order's deal. Advertisements on YouTube. All over the place. And then decided to go 1% club. Well, from the area you're from, maybe that might work. But the rest of the United States is going to be looking at you like, Dude, you guys started out as a cop club. And now you want to throw diamonds on. That right there, again, don't make any sense. So it's hard nowadays to go through and sh you know sift through all the BS that you hear. You know, you got actual, and this is one thing I don't get. You do have members of some nationally recognized clubs going on the internet and talking about club life or talking about protocol crap. What happened to never letting yourself be put out there or your club? I remember everybody used to bitch when the freaking feds or the local cops showed up to take down your license plates while you were at a party. Nobody wanted it to happen. Now, you're going to go on social media where all the cops have to do is sit back and you're doing your job for them. 
while they're looking in the backgrounds, all your stuff, picking out the guys and doing the intelligence work on you. But these guys actually come out. There's one on Facebook I laugh my ass off at. Talking about, well, you should do this. This is what the brotherhood should mean to you and that. You know what? That's for views, clicks, whatever you want. Be real now. This is real talk. That's all it's for. Because nobody's going to learn jack shit from you. I don't care if you're wearing a patch or not. They're not going to learn jack shit. The only way they're going to do that is to bring their happy asses to an open house or a party, an open party, introduce themselves and get to know the guys and then maybe, just maybe, go and say, well, how do I do this? What's the protocol for that? I hate to be a prick about it, but let's talk real. You're not learning shit from me. You're not learning shit from the other creators. You're just going off of our own experiences, maybe. But that's it. You can't do nothing unless you go out on the streets. An MC is not supposed to be a virtual reality deal. Where you can just sit there and play MC. This ain't, uh, what is that freaking uh, deal, San Andreas or whatever the hell it is. Where they go around popping people online. It's kind of a fun game. Uh, but then they, you can make your own biker club and stuff like that. This, That ain't this, man. It is serious business. Uh, some people get hurt. So to think that you can take advice from anybody, this is nothing but entertainment, guys. We're here to entertain you. That's about it. But when you see actual club members on Facebook or anywhere trying to teach this stuff, they're going after, you know what? They talk shit, but they're the ones that are actually doing the shit that they complain everybody else is doing. Let's put it that way. Let's put it real. Well, this guy's this and this guy's this. What the hell you think you're doing, dumbass? You're out there doing the same stuff. You're nothing but a creator. Because if you believed in what you were talking, you would tell the people like I do, get your ass off of a computer and go find a club. You would be doing that. All of them. But they don't. Ironhead writes, Hollywood, could you ever bring yourself to hang around a cop club? I know a, the, the answer is no. I'll never do that. Even though that things have changed, Ironhead, there's a line for me. You never, ever cross that line. You know, there was a... A very wise man, and he was a part of the Sons of Silence, J.R. Reed, once said, if you want to be a biker, be a damn biker. If you want to be a cop, be a damn cop. There's no in between. And that's how the old timers thought. And that's what they passed on to my generation. But I guess my generation's a bunch of... A bunch of butt smacks that don't know how to pass that down and that's the reason why we got what we got uh cheryl fountain kemp rock on cheryl uh do your proper protocol hang around prospect probate patch member quit airing your business on the internet very true now the protocol you you know that's where you get mixed up protocol is a different thing that what you're talking about hanging around prospect probate that's a tradition you know and you're right right quit airing your business on the internet because they're gonna know like when you watch my channel 
I have pissed off so many cops with my freaking content. I guarantee they're crawling over here looking for some bullshit. Because the cops are nothing but busybodies. That's what they do. So for guys, to, what are you, you're giving lessons to the cops on how to do something. Now you want to talk about dry snitching? My God, you're giving them all your protocol crap you're given to cops. And then you wonder why you have a guy like Falco or the other dude I was talking about, that ATF agent, that were able to infiltrate three clubs. For one, they didn't do their due diligence, I don't believe. Two, you got all these so-called creators Give them everything they need. So do you see why, one, I don't like really getting into that protocol crap. I like the history. I like doing other stuff. You know, working on court cases that are against clubs. But that's why always one of the bitches I always had was, you got creators talking this shit. You're giving them shit to be able to use on the street against clubs. You're giving them a blueprint of how to infiltrate a club. Now tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You can't say that I'm wrong. Let's see here. Uh, Randy, what's up, buddy? Hi, everyone. Glad to see you're all. Uh, it, it, it's hot as hell. I bet so, man. California, 110. Holy shit. Uh, profiling is a huge problem in my area of Idaho and Utah. Profiling is huge. It's a huge deal. Utah, Texas, anywhere. But again... You get people talking about how to infiltrate a fucking club. They might not frame it as that, okay? They might not be trying to do it intentionally, but they're still doing it. And then they're going crying and whine, well, this one creator's doing this and that. They're just trying to make money off the lifestyle. Do what the hell you guys think you're doing. Really, what do you guys think you're doing? See, you can't be real because your audience can't take it. And I'm trying to uh, be PC here, but I'm glad I got the audience that I got because they're not a bunch of PC pussies. The other one channels, you got to actually hold their peckers and try to push whatever you want to push into their heads. Uh, Ironhead, but Hollywood, this is where you got to blame the clubs themselves. So worried about quantity over quality, don't screen their so-called members. You know what? You're 100%, 100% correct, Ironhead. I can remember a time where you had to grow up around one of the members or one of their kids, you had to be tight to even get a support shirt. Now you got all these clubs online selling support shirts. I get it. Clubhouses are expensive. But now you're selling shirts to people that's going to represent your club who can go out there and do something stupid and next thing you know, you're reading the headlines. Well, this guy did this. He's an associated of the club. Wait a second. He bought it on eBay. What are you talking about? He bought the shirt on eBay. No, it's the club's fault. And it is also the club's fault when they do not have a long hangaround period. It hurts both people, the club and the person hanging around. Long prospect periods. 
You know, I can go on and on and on about that kind of stuff. It used to be in the day where you'd have private detectives actually follow around people. That was the best thing ever, man. Get a private detective, put them on somebody because that private, uh, that PI works for you. And next thing you know, you find out everything you want to find out. So yeah, clubs, not so much anymore, Ironhead. Not so much. It is all about that. Uh, Cheryl, uh, Hollywood, this is Sunshine. And before you end the show, I need to talk to you about a serious matter. Okay, rock and roll. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, no tag 100. Don't scream members 2021. That should be a good uh, hashtag right there. Don't scream uh, members 2021. And I think, it, you know, this kind of rant, this kind of real talk show I'm doing is because of that email. Because this dude was going after me every single day. It was like he uh, emailed the Lori Lightfoot uh, email. I don't know if you've seen that where she repeated it a hundred times. Well, that's the way it was becoming. And basically, besides it not being any of my damn business and I'm not giving it a care in the world, is if they started out with cops in there, guys, then they're co then that's their history. They're a cop club. Now, well, now they're saying they're one percenters. Okay, and you guys bitch and moan about the Iron Order. You're either going to be real about it and put the same type of blanket over everybody that has cops, or you're going to be a hypocrite. That's what I can tell you. You're going to be a freaking stone-cold hypocrite if you can accept them, but you can't accept the Iron Order because they're the same things. They both These clubs started the same way. Basically, it's fake if you ask me. Uh, Sherry is hot. Okay, rock on. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you guys are thinking with your peckers instead of listening to me. But it is what it is. That's what I got here. I got my guys friggin' with thinking with their peckers. Hey, rock and roll, man. At least your balls ain't in their purses, man. You know, that's another thing. Men, take your balls back, man. Really, take your balls back. It's quite embarrassing uh, <laughs> when you give it. Uh, let's see here. Ironhead, uh, no tag, meaning letting anyone and anybody in. Well, I guess that's how you get a lot of informants, man. That's how you get a lot of uh, infiltrators, isn't it? Because you had ATF agents able to infiltrate three different clubs tell me where that goes on how the hell that happened you would think that somebody would have known somewhere what was going on but i guess it ain't like that anymore jose what happened to the morning show uh fridays i'm gonna be going on at 5 p.m live here on youtube uh, so there won't be a show in the morning on Fridays. There's still the Hollywood and China Dow show on uh, the radio station. But as far as the YouTube per portion, it's going to be uh, right here at 5 o'clock on Friday. So, uh, yeah, you know, I announced it, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, another question here. I grew up with a uh, number one club at the time on the East Coast and the neighbors. Some of them off list cops had list of plates, spots, addresses, way of life. That's the way it was, man, uh, when you were in a club. You know, one thing that concerns me is I actually know they're not rumors because I've met some guys. But you have 1% uh, clubs out there selling their patches now just to get numbers where they used to be in one specific territory of the country. Now they're spreading out all over the place, and they're actually selling their shit. So I guess the Iron Order argument goes out the window, doesn't it, guys? 
Just saying, man. <laughs> uh, Ghost Eagle, once a fuzz pig, Leo, always a fuzz pig, Leo. It is the same as a zebra, cannot change its stripes. You got that, man. You got that back, man. Now, you guys want an example of ignorance, okay? You want an example of ignorance? And do you want an example of how MC members don't think like a gangbanger would? I was defending that, uh, what was it, the ex-national of the Thug Riders, I believe. He was a corrections officer. And I went from it at a street way of looking at things. Where those are the guys that you nab up. Because those are the ones that are going to mule for you. They're the ones that are going to take care of your members in the joint. They're going to get messages in and out of the joint. That's where you're making all your money is through that mule. Well, you have some other people. Well, he's encouraging correctional officers in a club. Dude, there's some one percenter clubs right now uh, that I can tell you have a lot of COs in them. But they're doing it smart. Because that's what they're using them for. But these are the type of guys that automatically yell and scream that, well, wait a second, he's saying take cops, take cops. If you knew what the streets were actually about and start up getting off, get off this freaking internet crap, you would know that they're used behind bars for money purposes. But people talk out of their ass. They don't know what they're talking about. One, because they watch too many TV shows. Two, they never been involved in anything like that for the need for it. They just jump on the bad wagon and say, well, he's a CO. They're not supposed to be in a club. Okay, what about the one percenter ones? Well-knowns, by the way, that take them. Are you going to tell them they're wrong because they do take them or let them become associated with them so they can take care of their brothers behind bars? That's the stuff they leave out in their arguments. God knows they're not going to argue that point. Let's see what we got here. John O, do background checks on folks wanting the prospect. It's not hard to do. Uh, the problem with the background checks. It depends on how they do it. It really does. Hi, Jeremiah. Anybody can run an NSA check. It's only going to give you basic public information, employers, credit files, stuff like that. The problem is you need to de dive deeper into it. Meaning you got to know who their family members are, who their family members are married to. If their kids are married to some, you got to know the whole pyramid scheme to get an actual background on somebody because yeah, you might run a background on him. He's, he has no ties to cops, but Hey, wait a second. His younger brother's married to a broad who's, Cousin is a cop. You see where I'm getting at? That's the only way to do a true background, in my opinion. You got to go down the line of the people that they know or are associated with. And most clubs, they'll say, hey, give me $30 for a background check. Okay, and 30 bucks ain't going to get you the information you need unless you got a smart enforcer or sergeant at arms that actually follows up on that paperwork and starts digging. Actually, that's what the prospect or probate period is supposed to be about is not only the club getting to know you, but also for them people to be checking you out. And a lot of that don't happen anymore. That's why thus you see an ATF agent that hit three clubs it is not hard for cops to run a backstory now if you don't know what a backstory is 
that's when they go infiltrate and say, well, this is what I did, what I, you know, where I've been. They can say they were locked up for the last 10 years and these idiots will backstory them with paperwork showing them they were there. That's the downfall, and that. So, that's what I mean by they're not organized. Even a lot of organized crime organizations don't go that in depth. They used to, but it happens no more. And I remember in the, in the neighborhood, when even you were suspected of being an informer. Yeah, you weren't clipped right away, but you had people following your every move. They shadowed, shadowed you like an undercover cop would. It's not like that no more. Ironhead, think about it, Hollywood. Get arrested by your own patch if you get, get got to do some dirt. <laughs> well, that's one thing I never understood. If you're going to have cops in your club, you got to know, unless you're the stupidest person on the face of the earth, that they're always going to side with their cop buddies. For one, they got a pension. For two, they got that blue wall. And three, you don't mean nothing to them because they can lose their job. So I don't care how tight you are with them. It's never going to work out because at the first time of trouble, they're going to bust you. Just saying. Uh, no. Uh, let's see here. Cito, I have love for my club personal. I ride solo. I get along with everyone, but I try my best not to get caught up in the BS. I'm here to help in prayer to anyone who wishes to find Christ, regardless of club. Rock and roll, man. Talking about that man upstairs, dude. I'm a 100% believer, man. And I never apologize for that stuff, man. Never. Ironhead, selling some dope and pink taco, and you got somebody next to you all right in it all down. You got that right, man. You used to be able to sell that taco, and now it's considered uh, trafficking. Uh, dope, same thing, man. You used to be able to... Uh, do a couple lines without having to worry about being narked on. That ain't happening anymore. It's a whole different type of deal, man. Uh, Cheryl then uh, should join the Blue Knights Club. You know what? One thing about the, the Blue Knights deal, at least they know they're cops. But you got these other clubs that are cop clubs that actually run around and act like one percenter clubs. You got them going into bars, causing all kinds of crap with the citizens because they can't break themselves up and say, hey, I'm just a cop. But at least the Blue Knights, you got to say, hey, at least they know. Uh, Dark Soul, I love making a pig comment, purger, why on stand, case dismissed. Rock and roll, man. <laughs> Problem is, uh, with a lot of people these days, they don't know how to take it, they don't know how to face up this stuff, man. They'd rather turn on somebody instead of taking it like a man. You know, like that that sergeant of that national sergeant at arms for the banditos when he went down. He only got what five years he was facing life. Well, here's a guy that was over at your house partying with you, you know, attached to your kids, probably, and next thing you know, because he got caught, he wants to turn on you. Now, if that was a blood oath type of deal. If he took a blood oath, he'd be dead right now. No ifs, ands, or buts. He'd be dead. Witness protection or not, they would have got him. But he's walking around, isn't he? So how can you say clubs are organized crime? You got a lot of people that ratted out there that are still walking the streets that haven't been hit. So 
there is no blood in and blood out in a motorcycle club. I don't care how many people try to tell you that crap. There isn't. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, take a couple more questions. Met a lot of 1% who are some of the coolest righteous cats in the planet. You know what? Most 1%ers are. The ones that ain't, they're just doing their culture a shitty turn, if you ask me. The ones that want to puff their chest and act like this and that are usually the first ones that run to the tape recorder on the FBI's desk to get out of problems. Just so you know, those are those types. Uh, but the other ones are down to earth. You know, they're welcoming. You know, one percenters, they want the support. So when you have people out there acting like some of these people do, you're just turning them away from what you're about and away from supporting your club. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that was a good one here, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Qu uh, Kimber, just like the downfall of the Italian mob, no one respects the blood oath of Amrita. You know what? And that started actually during the, uh, what is that, the Robbie, uh, Robbie uh, Kennedy uh, hearings and stuff like that when they started turning. The problem is now is there's so much technology. But, yeah, that blood oath really means, you know, here in Chicago it's a little different. They operate a little different than the five families do in New York. Uh, they're a lot more hardcore. They're a lot more traditional type of guys. Uh, so that blood oath does mean something. I'd have to say, uh, but you are right on that, you got prison gangs that take it a thousand percent more serious than a lot of the, unfortunately, a lot of the Italians do. You got a lot of uh, different type of organized crime coming into Chicago. You got your Russians. Uh, you got your Japanese in here now uh, where... Before, you would have never seen that kind of stuff. Never. Never. Hollywood, what you doing this summer? Never done before. Well, I got Rumble in the Woods coming up for Insane Throttle members. Uh, that is next month. We're going to be uh, camping out, having rides, and partying like it was 1977. You know? Uh, so I'll be doing that kind of stuff. A lot different uh, type of content, as you already seen. Jose, well, I know where you li you are, Jose. You're in the Humble Park neighborhood. You got that right. Uh, in the streets, you don't make threats unless you're going to follow through with it. That is 100%, I'd have to say, 1,000% correct. And I'm not trying to make MCs something that they're below or whatever, but if you go up to a hardcore gangbanger, and you threaten them, and you got a patch on because you think your club might back you, they're going to blow your brains out. You know, because you got to remember, even if they went to prison, it's the same thing about, uh, same thing like it is on the streets. They're still with the same guys. They're still with the same organization because the gangs run the, uh, the system. So he ain't going to have any doubt to shoot your ass. You know that's true, Jose, especially in Chicago. You start making threats, you got to follow through on that kind of crap, man. Ghost, I trust the 1% more than any Leo when I was younger. The one percenter was the only ones who helped save me. Rock and roll, uh, and everybody knows how I fucking feel about cops. That ain't a, that's a no-brainer. Uh, Costa Nostra, yeah, they used to be some old tough guys, man. Uh, I remember uh, Tony Accardo here in uh, Chicago and stuff like that, Big Tuna. Uh, smart guy, man. They used to say he had more brains than Al Capone did uh, all day or something like that. Uh, Scully and Sunshine, hope to join you in the Rumble in the Woods. Can't wait. You're always invited. Uh, rock on, man. Uh, if you don't have the uh, details, go over to Discord, get a hold of China Dow. She can give you all those details. Be awesome, you guys join us. That'd be awesome. Uh, Ironhead, real men don't make threats, they just do it. 
You're damn right, man. That's why you got to take a lot of this type of stuff serious. And you just can't take people because you can always hear their talking points are taken from somebody on the internet. That's why I hate to blow it, man, but I'm just for entertainment only. I'm here to look like a clown for you guys. Other than that, I give opinions. That's the way everybody is, but you can hear talking points of some of these people that come up to you and start talking to you. You're like, yeah, you watch this guy, you watch that guy. Now, thankfully, you're talking to somebody like me who has no skin in that, but you're going to talk to somebody else that does, they're going to knock the hell out of you, man. It's just the way it is. Uh, Jeremiah, I still honor my blood brother. May he rest in peace. Died from gunshots. Watched the life leave his eyes. You know, sad state of affair, man. Sad state of affairs. It really is. Uh, but, you know, that's nothing new in Chicago. I'm sure it's nothing new in uh, New York and L.A. It's just nasty business. So hopefully I was able to uh, answer that question about uh, blood holes. Uh, and I'm going to do this real talk stuff, man. So if you guys got uh, something you want me to address, uh, being straight up real, man, let me know. Uh, email it to info at insanethrottlebikernews.com and we'll get that uh, taken care of for you on the next one. Again, next Friday, same time live uh, here on YouTube. And also, I put something in the community tab. If you you can't get the replay of the radio show with me and China Dow, we're actually going to have the video replays going on Rumble. So... I'll put a link in the description for that kind of stuff. So rock on, everybody. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, give it a thumbs up. You guys have a good weekend. Get out there. Have some fun. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining in. Make sure you share it.